better. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds a lot like good times on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, uh, very. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> it's those two cracked me up. Well, you guys, we're here. Oh my gosh. This is episode number 916 and 917. I'm sorry, you guys, you weren't my first. <laughs> oh. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. I think it's because of OCD. <laughs> but that's cool. Thanks for congratulating my diagnosis. <laughs> no, I stayed busy during the pandemic, you know? That's great. <laughs> you gotta do something. Wow. Did you do all they those episodes even... during the pandemic? No, 38 oh. of them I did at Harvey's Comedy Club in Portland, Oregon. Okay. They're the ones that believed I could do this. I didn't know I could do this. I love it. Go Harvey's. Yeah, now they're now they're no longer in existence. I'm oh my so God. sad. Oh my gosh. You guys, I'm going to do the intro to the show. Yes, sirree. Buckle up, buckle in, do what you got to do. This is going to go off the rails every which way but loose. And we're okay with that, you guys. Woo! These, <laughs> these episodes are so you people at home can kick back and enjoy getting to know comedians, people in entertainment. There, You know, like I have seen more people waste money going to comedy they don't know. They don't care. They just go to a show and come out and go, why did I go? Now you get a chance. You know, like I'm the only one doing this. I get it. <laughs> this is the only way you're going to get to know who a comedian is off stage. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I only tell the truth. So I have two sponsors. One is an artist in Portland, Oregon. He's the only artist in Portland, Oregon. Okay, maybe not. His name is Steve Solomon, S-O-L-O-M-O-N, like in the Bible. And he takes my pictures and makes me look good. Do you understand how rare that is? Just find my friend Steve Solomon on my Facebook thing over by Maryland. And and friend him and tell him, I want to pay you money. I need to look good. You know, I want to look like Linda or Marilyn or something. Then the other sponsor is this thingamajig. <laughs> I don't know what to call things anymore. I think I'm getting a dementia. <laughs> Veteransofcomedy.com. We'll see Eric Knowles, American Veterans of the Military, started an organization. They go around the world doing comedy, small scale like Armed Forces Entertainment, but they have a motto that says, leave no laugh behind. I'm surprised they let me in because for the first seven and a half years, that's all I was doing. <laughs> anyway, enough about me. <laughs> you know, this show isn't about me. This show is about my guests. <laughs> So kick back and get to know two of my personal favorites. I was on their show, the Jackie Mo show. You guys got to watch it. It's hilarious. It's so great. They do a fabulous job. Let's get to know who they are. First, I'm going to do the intros. And the first intro I've chosen to do is Lisa Haas. Lisa Haas is an actor and comedy writer working in film, television, and theater. Holy Toledo. That's a mouthful. And you can see her in the third season of Search Party on HBO Max. She's also in the Sundance premiere feature films, Codependent Lesbian Space Alien Seeks Same, The Foxy Merkins, and The Foxy Merkins. She is the writer for the narrative comedy podcast In Heat and is excited to invite you to listen on Apple Podcast In Heat or anywhere you stream your iPods. And that's the intro for Lisa. So hey, say hello, Lisa. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you so much for introing me. Yes, that's a very classic way to respond to me being awkward. And now, and now for the intro for the other guest, Jackie Monahan is sitting right there waiting patiently. She's a comedian actor, writer, and producer, oh, you know, blowing my mind, <laughs> who is setting comedy stages on fire from LA to New York, 
This land is your land. With her fearless brand of humor, well, and toured the country featuring for Amy Schumer, woo, which included opening for her monthly in Vegas. OMG. Welcome to the stage right now, Jackie Monahan. Hi. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Oh my God, you guys. It's so great to have you. I just saw you like a week or so ago. And here you are again. It's magic. <laughs> Tell me in the Lisa Jackie order that I've pre-selected, please tell me what the heck were you doing when the pandemic hit and how's it been going? You get a couple minutes to answer. Uh, well, I was I was teaching classes at the Borough of Manhattan Community College one second and then the next second all hell broke loose and I was like online uh, watching this uh, CUNY for like City of New York, City University of New York college wide Zoom session where administrators were going, you're going on Zoom now. We need to get the students on Zoom now. You're gonna keep teaching your classes. It's all gonna be on Zoom. And I was just like, I thought I was gonna have a nervous breakdown. And I, I, and I was just like, so when the pandemic started, I was so busy. It was unbelievable teaching classes on Zoom. And I was so jealous of everybody else who had time to binge Netflix series. <laughs> and did you get COVID or any of your friends and families get it bad? Uh, no, I'm very lucky. Very lucky. Good. That's awesome. And Jackie, you get the same identical question because same and identical mean the same thing. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. I, I, I remember distinctly, I had a show March 12th and I was dating a new woman and she was going to meet me there. I had, I arranged for her to be calm to the door and um, the show was canceled and it was about to be quarantine and I couldn't believe it. And I, it, it all seemed like the last minute. It didn't seem like I had any warning which I I don't really watch the news because it's so negative to me, the energy of it, all of it. I get my news and I get it so much from other people that I, I just am like, I'll, I'll get it that way. So I really didn't know what was going on. And on top of it all, I... I'm a serial dater. Like I've, oh, I've just like oh, always been with somebody, and it was my first time really being alone. And even my ex-wife was like, "Where should you go?" Like she just was like, I, "Nobody thought I could," including me. I you know I was a little bit like, "Should I stay here?" Like we didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know like, and I'm like, "I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna trust in all that is, and know that I'm gonna be fine." And I. I I ended up loving it. I really loved, I never have taken a break from stand up. Um, and I'm always darting from one spot to the next, like constantly. So, and I, I made a, a, a um, you know, an amends to myself to not dart around like that again. And I'm kind of doing it right now. So I'm kind of adjusting and seeing, um, I just, yeah, I loved being still and with myself during the quarantine. I really did. And did you, Jackie, did you have any family or close friends devastatingly affected by COVID? Um, I have friends who their partners or their parents were devastatingly affected, uh, but nobody super close to me. Um, yeah, but I mean, and I never got COVID, knock on wood, but yeah. That's good. Well, thank you. So now what I like to do, now that I got up to speed with where, oh, what cities are you both in right this minute? I'm I'm in New York City. What part? What exact oh, little neighborhood? I, I'm literally in Manhattan. I'm literally on the corner of Amsterdam Avenue and 60th Street, which oh. is kind of behind Lincoln Center, kind of nearish behind Lincoln Center. Yes, absolutely. I know that area very well. <laughs> That's where the buses let me out when I come from Philly. 
right over there. And then Jackie, what city are you in? I'm in Los I'm Angeles, Los Angeles in um, Culver City. Ooh, Culver City. I like that. That's nice there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you used to live in Philly? I did. I stayed. I was roommates with Paul Lyons. Do you know him? Sounds very familiar. Mm -hmm. He uh, He's a ship comic. So, you know, he rented out his place. And then when he came to town, he slept on the balcony. And I had the place to myself. It was That's awesome. That's great. Wow. Yeah. I love Philly. Me too. And the comedy is so great there. Yeah. Love yeah. It. I lived there for a while. Did you? Yeah, I performed at the Laugh House. Yeah. Oh, and and Tin Angel and Sisters. Wow. I don't know those places. Yeah. I, um, I loved going to Helium, and then there's yeah. Fergie's Bar. Did you ever go to the mic at Fergie's? Mm -mm. You got to go. Oh, my God. They go till, like, 2, 3 in the morning. Whoa. Wow. It's so great. You meet every comic in town. They're all there practicing. Uh, and they're all there listening and clapping. Wow, that's strange. Very supportive. No such thing here. Yeah, it's a little tougher in L.A., huh? I was just like... Yeah, make me laugh. Yeah. Let me steal your jokes. Yeah. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so let's go back. Um, let's get in a DeLorean and get a flux capacitor and go back to when you were little kids. I I have I like to imagine what you were like in school and in your family growing up. What was those what were those? How did people perceive you, Lisa and Jackie, in that order? <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I, I'm not, well, I was very quiet as a child. Um, my mom thought I was accident prone, but I was not. <laughs> <laughs> I was not, I had like two accidents and then I was forever accident prone, but I was like, come on, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I, when I was a little kid, I was like, wanted to be a scientist or a veterinarian or an archeologist or, um a geologist so those were my passions as a child um yeah yeah and uh, uh i i i guess as a child i noticed that the other little kids were real assholes and mean to each other like in grade school like off the off the hook i was just like unbelievably mean to other kids so i was kind of i maybe i was sensitive i was maybe i was sensitive me too I've been really sensitive. So then um, let's ask that question of Jackie. What were you perceived like in your home and at school? I was perceived as a demon child. No, I really, um, it's interesting. I really had a beautiful combination of being a rascal, but not crossing a line. Like everybody loved what I did. Like even in school, I was always doing crazy stuff. But for some reason, the teachers loved it. They would laugh too. And I, I couldn't believe it. Like one history class, I interrupted it every single day. And every single day, everybody laughed. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It was really fun. And then um, like the same thing happened when I started comedy. Like I would do things and other comedians would do them and they would get yelled at and I would. But uh, also as a kid, I was I was voted funniest girl in school and um, class clown. Oh, and uh, my best friend, he was voted funniest guy in school, but he had to share it with another guy, mm -hmm. um, which I never brought up. But he would always be like, "Yeah, I have to share." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But we're still friends now. He lived. He moved to New York. Then I moved to New York. Then he moved to LA. And then I moved to LA. And then I moved in with him. Then I moved out on my own. And then he moved in with me. And now we barely talk. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. We, we still talk. But it's, it's really what helped me love solitude. Uh, yeah. I get it. Totally get it. I have a marriage like that. <laughs> 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 I had one. So what's the weirdest thing that happened that woke you up that comedy was in your future, Lisa and Jackie? 
that's wow yeah wow well i used i i very much liked humorous books when i was a kid and i don't know did you did you guys read um harriet the spy when you were little and in, in fourth grade i we had to read harriet the spy which is which is some kind of a very dry humor dry and humor but it's also extremely funny and I remember reading it. I was saying to the other kids at school, "This is so funny! Don't you get how funny this is?" And people were just like, "Meh," <laughs> and and so I just I don't know. So I guess I read Judy Bloom as a kid, which I thought was hysterically funny. I'm like, "This is so funny! Are you reading this? It's so funny." Um, and so yeah, I guess I guess I was reading more. I read Paul Zindel as a kid. I don't know. He wrote The Pig Man and Pardon Me, You're Stepping on My Eyeball. He wrote young adult novels, and I would read them. And go to your, in, in junior high, did you read that? Yeah, nobody nobody seemed to quite get how funny those books were. But so I I read a lot of books like that when I was a kid. So I think that's one of the reasons I'm that what got me interested. That is so cool. I bet you could make like you could see the funny in uh, King Solomon. <laughs> very, uh, very likely. <laughs> and Jackie, what's your story with that? Um, I did really, I did really crazy things to my mother. Like my dad would be away at business trips, and I would. Were oh, they business trips or I were know. they? No, I think they were, but I'm sure he was misbehaving at the same time. But he had a mustache, and I would, anybody that had a mustache, I would scream. And I was like three. I would scream, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And I would go grab their legs so that my mom would be wildly embarrassed. <laughs> and, um, and then I would, in the grocery store, my mom would be like, Jacqueline, pick out your cereal. And I'd be like, just don't hit me again, okay? I'll pick it out. And she couldn't react because if she said, no, I don't hit her, people would be like, yeah, you do. And so she just, and she didn't, she didn't really, she didn't punish me for it, which was nice. Um, but she just had no reaction. I think that's, my mom was always just like dulled. And I just like wanted to get reactions from her. But she would never get, give me a reaction, but I would hear her telling her friends and her friends would just die laughing and they would be like, oh my God, she's a comedian. And I didn't even know what that meant. I was just like, I'm a comedian. <laughs> um, and then I like, I didn't, I grew up in Rhode Island where everybody was like a teacher, nobody was a comedian. And luckily I found my friend Tom uh, in high school, the one that was voted uh, funniest with me. And he was just like, you need to do comedy. You, like, you're a comedian. And I was just like, I don't, I didn't, and it wasn't until I met my ex-wife that she was like, yes, you need to do comedy. Like, she made me do stand-up. Uh, but I just didn't really think it was a thing that you could uh -huh. really do. Uh, okay, then let's talk about the very first time you went on stage, Lisa and Jackie. Where was it? How did it go? And since then, how's it been going too? You get a few minutes on this one, you guys, you ladies. <laughs> I mean, I guess the, the very first time I went on stage was I had to take, had to take dance lessons as a little kid. And we, but, and, but I don't really count that as, as the first time going on stage because it was really, you know, uh, and like like all these little six year olds had to do the Charleston, <laughs> and at the end of it, we were supposed to go woo. And we were, I was just like, this is so so embarrassing. But I I what what I count my first legitimate time on stage was in sixth grade. We did um, a play. The English class did a play called The Way Out Cinderella, and it was an adaption of Cinderella. And I was the Way Out Fairy Godmother, and. <laughs> And so yeah. during the performance, like, the, you know, when, when you're supposed to be interrupted by other characters, the lines are, and then I dot, 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 and then the, that, the signal that the person interrupts you. And the other kids on stage didn't get that, so I would say my line and kind of, and then say a little bit more, kind of waiting for them to interrupt me. And like, like jo and Joni Freeze, like, she was the person who needed to interrupt me. I don't even know where she, hi, Joni Freeze, are you out there? I'm, <laughs> 
she she didn't interrupt me and that really that disturbed me i thought how does she not know and i keep helping her out you know i keep talking just a little bit more so so i i was a positive experience in a slightly frustrating experience absolutely and so the first time you got on a comedy stage what was that like <laughs> You know, you know, so I, I, I don't perform stand up comedy, I but I've been in a lot of plays that are comic uh, and uh, and have played roles that are um, that are comic. So I, I guess the first so I mean, maybe the first time people laughing at my performance is that is that maybe the there first, you go. Yeah, um, um, I, well, you know how people say hold for laughs and stuff like that? Like, I don't, I guess I, I don't think about it as holding for laughs. I think about like the audience when they laugh, that's their conversation back to you. So like kind of holding for laughs, is, holding is kind of natural. Like you're, so when people laughed, when I heard them laugh for the first time, it was uh, engaging because I knew they were engaged. So it was like kind of easy to like let their laughter die down before I said the next line, right? Because like, you, you know how you don't, want to try to interrupt people but their laughter i guess i think of the, as their dialogue back to the person on stage That's so so idea. so so it was very exciting to have hear people laugh because that meant that they were engaged with the the show with me or and and the whole show absolutely now it's your turn, jackie first time on a stage that's not comedy or comedy Take us where that was for you. Uh, I want to add that Lisa does storytelling, which is very much like stand up. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I, What'd you say? Lisa does storytelling. That's a lot like stand up. And she does oh. it fantastically. Wow. Do you do the moth? Is that I have. I have done the moth. Yeah. Super. Uh, I want to hear about that. your storytelling when Jackie gets done with this question. Back to me, Lisa. Stop hogging everything. Okay. It's a running joke with us, but that's based on truth that she's a scene stealer. So, well, I mean, watch her in Search Party. She's stealing all the scenes. Okay. And the Foxy Merkins, for sure, watch. She steals every scene. So You're only as good as, and I told Jackie, you're only as good as the people you're acting with. Oh. Miss Mon Ms. Monahan. Ooh, yeah. Ms. Monahan. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. So <laughs> uh, it's interesting. I, I didn't think of this until Lisa talked about her school thing. I was in a play, and I... I, I wanted, I was in, like, it was a room, and I was sitting in a chair. I had, like, a line, but I did, told everybody, I'm going to get up, and I'm going to do air guitar and start singing, whoa, we're halfway there, whoa. So I did that, and everybody went crazy, and I, I couldn't believe I did it, and, and I couldn't believe I waited till we were live and everybody was just like, oh my God, like the adults, the, the teachers were just like, what is she doing? But um, but it got a big laugh. Everybody thought it was like made for for the thing. And it that's my favorite stuff, just like being crazy. Like just like, you know, shaking things up, not being planned, that's what I like. But my first time doing stand up was at Ha Comedy Club in New York City. It was an open mic. And I remember my jokes. I talked about how men have obviously come up with the names for the vagina because no woman is like, hey, yeah, I'll, oh, I wish I could join you for lunch, Betsy, but I got to go get my gas checked out at the gynecologist. Or, or like nobody's like, oh, I fell on my bike. Ow, I really hurt my dad to my taco. <laughs> like, no way. Uh, and and everybody really embraced me right away and yeah I, I really kind of did it to to shut my my then wife up because she was and she was right she was just like I don't want to hear that you would be a better stand-up than everybody on tv unless you try it and I was like oh like, I had no intention of doing it, but I was like, I was damn well not going to stop saying that I was funnier than all these people. So uh, I really just wanted it to be one and done. But I got addicted immediately. Like, I, I, other people, like, I have friends that 
or I haven't done stand up in two years because of the pandemic. And I'm just like, I don't understand it. Like I have to do it at least once a week. I've never not done it. Like in pandemic, I had to do it on Zoom. Like I have to, I have to, or I'm depressed. That's right. And I don't get, let's take a little sidestep. I don't understand how some of these legends and, you know, snobby comics say that, you know, Zoom doesn't count because it's much harder to get and sustain laughs on Zoom. Yeah, I, I think there's pros and cons of both. For me during the pandemic, it was really fun with Zoom because my friends in Rhode Island could see me and I could do comedy in Ireland. Like there's a pro and con of all of it. Like I don't understand people who just like have to be black or white about everything because there's a benefit of both. I mean, there's nothing like doing it live, for sure. But the advantages of Zoom are undeniable. It's like, come on. Yeah. I, you know, like you go, to, I want to send a 20-minute video to Dry Bar. And I did 30 minutes of headlining on Zoom one time. <laughs> so, of course, I'm qualified, right? So I want to send it. And I asked Keith Stubbs, and he goes, Zoom doesn't count. And I'm like, do you know how hard it is to keep us laughing on Zoom for 30 minutes without a cat walking by, you know? Yeah, without a cat walking by. <laughs> Just that's ah, weird. But yeah. oh, back to, now we're going to go back in over to Lisa. Lisa, time and money is of no consideration with this joke. I mean, with this question, sorry. <laughs> with this question, time and money doesn't equate into it. If you could do anything or go anywhere to save people's lives with comedy before you kick the bucket, which is going to be another hundred years, uh, where would you go? What would you do? You know, that's that's a really good question. Like the, uh, I I guess yeah, but you know, I, being in New York City, like I see homeless folks or the unhoused folks constantly i mean so they're they're like uh they're on my mind a lot because i see them a lot so if i could do I, w I would love to be able to bring joy into folks's lives who are homeless um and 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 uh, i would love to i don't know work with them to have them do storytelling or do their own stand-up comedy because uh, people have so many rich things to to share but i guess i guess if to do something humanitarian to help somebody i guess i would say like the homeless population wherever that might be i and i say new york city just because but there's homeless folks everywhere i mean that's the first thing that comes to mind you know the one of the places that i went to when i was living in new york is i went to the upper east side of Central Park, there's a youth hostel right there in a really nice little pocket neighborhood. And they let you, they do regular comedy and they might do regular storytelling if you go in. Oh, thank you for oh. telling me. I didn't know uh, it's a uh, on the Upper East Side. Yeah, it's clear oh, over oh. there. Oh, oh, no, I don't mean it. <laughs> I don't mean like, oh my God, it's so far away. I just want to be clear because I think there's also one on the Upper West Side, but the Upper East Side too. Okay, thank you for sharing that. And um, I'm, I go to the synagogue that um, is, I can't, Actors Temple, that's kind of over by you. I, I've heard of that. I have not, I haven't been there, but I have heard of that. They're always looking for ways to bring the community inside. So you might hit up Rabbi Jill. Okay, thank you. Temple. Thank you for sharing that. She's so loving. You have no idea. I, w I was expecting somebody really snobby and judgmental because that, that's my growing up in the Jewish world. But this lady, she, she's like a saint. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm writing it down here. Absolutely. Now back to Jackie. I love that. That was beautiful. Isn't that um, cool? I... My, something that I really want to do is, I mean, okay, so no money, no object. I, I want to feed, like go to sleep one night knowing the whole world has been fed. And, 
it, it just boggles my mind that, like one time when <laughs> I'm telling on myself for my naivety, I, um, I said to my friend, I was because I really, like when I was little, my mom would be like, finish your plate, there's starving kids in Africa or whatever, and I'd be like, you're an adult, like why, why <laughs> how is me eating this? Like I don't understand, like you're an adult, help those people. Can you help those people? Like, why are we not helping them? Why are we turning the TV on and drinking wine? Like, can we help them? And uh, and I'm, so I've always kind of been like, how can we help them? And one time I called my friend. I was like, what if, I'm like, in other countries, people eat cats and dogs. What if we, instead of putting cats and dogs to sleep, we send them our cats and dogs, and they can eat the cats and dogs, and then everybody gets fed. And my friend was just like, nice sentiment, Jackie, but we definitely have enough actual food to send the world. It's just nobody's getting it there. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm, I get so angry. Like, I really want to figure out a way to, to get, I would love to be able to do it myself, to make enough money to make that happen. I mean, the feeling of going to sleep at night knowing the whole world was fed, I think is the most the joyful feeling you could feel. Uh, so I think an, another way to get that to happen would be to get the, the billionaires, trillionaires of our planet to understand that, to understand how good it would feel to go to sleep knowing you specifically fed the whole world. And I don't, because of the way the world is set up, nobody knows that. Nobody knows how good that feels. And that's a sin, like that's painful to me. And I, so I'm doing all I can to <laughs> show that and um, be an example of that. Like right now, like, you know, I've done some really cool stuff, but the stuff that makes me feel the most alive and good is, I, you know, I've spoken at jails. And um, every Saturday I go to a detox center and take these people that are detoxing for a walk. And, you know, I just let them know, like, hey, I did, you know, I did a stand-up show yesterday. It went great but this is what I like even more. And it really is what I like even more. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you get something going on a big scale to have everybody go to sleep at night with a full tummy, I will help you with it any way you want me to that I can because my family went through the Holocaust and oh. I know the pain you know, yeah. of not having relatives because they starved to death. Yeah. So I would be right there, Jackie, to help oh, you. Oh, let's do it. Let's make that happen. I'm I not just that. saying it. I would be there for same, you. Same, same. Okay, let's do it. I'm excited. This is great. Yeah. Oh, my Linda, gosh. You're wonderful. You're really. Uh, you guys are. I'm just reflecting back the way you guys make me feel. I, do you know, I've done 900 and I don't know, 900. Did I say this is my 9, 16th and 17th interview? Because there's two. I, you guys make me feel like a million bucks. So, good, good. You are a million bucks. I can only be, I can only bring the energy I receive and you guys put out the best energy. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, thank you. You love to you. So I'm going to give the floor to Lisa to say anything <clears throat> you want to say about your comedy career, where to follow you, where you're going to be performing, how to be kinder people in a really crappy world right now. Anything you, I don't want you to leave not getting to say anything you want to say. Jokes, a poem, whatever. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see. Well, one thing about the homeless that I like that I don't think everybody understands is that you can't go from being homeless to making a hundred thousand dollars a year. Like, because people are like, why don't they get a job? Why? So they can get an <laughs> apartment. It's like, it's like you, almost, almost anywhere you live, like, to make a deposit on an apartment or uh, you can't go from homelessness to a hundred thousand dollars a year you know so so that's the uh, economic the inequities of the economics is something that really you know bothers me and uh so, so that that's something that so i i guess 
I, I, hello, everybody. You can't go from being homeless to a hundred thousand, making a hundred thousand dollars. But so, the, so there's that. But um, I, I, I'm very excited. Like I know Jackie and I are go, are working on things together, and I'm very excited about those. I think I don't think we're we're speaking about exactly what they are, um, to, out loud to others, but to ourselves. Yes. 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 Um, so I, I'm excited about those projects with Jackie, and I'm excited. And I'm excited about. Um, I'm excited about my podcast, uh, which is in heat and you can find it on any, um, any place that streams podcasts, or, or you can find it online, www.in-heat.com. And I, I'm working with an actress who's like very funny. She's been a longtime collaborator with me and she's, she's, she's the voice of the podcast and uh, she's super funny. So I guess I would really I really like lots of people to hear that podcast. And then, and then, and then I just like, like one of the favorite things in my life that's ever happened to me was, and Jackie and I were both in like two of the world's funniest lesbian comedies of all time. Like we were both in like codependent lesbian space alien seek same and the Foxy Merkins and, uh, and the director and writer of those are, are amazing. And I, like, I feel like I, if had I not ever moved to New York, I would have never met Madeline. I would have, who, Madeline Alnick, the director of, and writer of those movies. I would have, there's so many people I wouldn't have met, but that's so important uh, to have queer and lesbian visibility. And I feel so um, blessed. I don't know, I, I usually don't say that, I usually, but I feel very, I feel I, I, so grateful, blessed. What? that I got to be a part of that super unique thing that that like kind of one of a kind um, movies that are with, you know, never before seen things in them in, in the cinematic history. That's awesome. Thank you so much. So your movies that you were in, um, you know, I'm not a part of your group of uh, you know, I don't identify as queer in any which way or loose. So I'm, I don't know the questions to ask, but so was that like, did you have like a cult following of a kind for those movies? Yeah, I would say so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Super. That is so cool. I was reading it like it was, yeah, I was reading the names of your movies. And I don't know. I didn't have a clue. I just thought, oh, a couple movies. <laughs> but these were groundbreaking landmark things for your community. Yes, that, yes. And right. And they both, they both premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. Um, yeah, I know. Wow. Right. Like, like, can it get any better? You know, like those are, those are amazing. That's amazing. That's so great. Oh my gosh. Now to you, Jackie. Ooh la la. I, um, I piggyback on those movies. They're treasures to me. Like I'm, I feel so grateful uh, to have been in them. And that's how I met Lisa. That's and, how I met Jackie. Yeah. And we weren't, the first one, we weren't even in scenes together. But we were at Sundance together and we started collaborating right away. Like we couldn't, we couldn't not collaborate. And then Madeline saw us, was just like, what were these two <laughs> together are dynamite. So that's when we all wrote the next movie. So. Yes, J Jackie and I are co-writers on the Foxy Merkins. Right. And now what's the Foxy Merkins about? And we're the lead characters. It's a um, it's a parody of my own private Idaho, and a little bit of Midnight Cowboy. So those are men hustler movies. So it's about female hustlers, lesbian hustlers. Love it's it. very funny. It's very very funny because there's no such thing. So it's a fake world. So it's very very funny. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So tell us about anything that you want to say. You have. Okay. Five minutes to stay right. here. I go. Okay, so watch us on. Also, listen to Lisa's podcast. It's very. It sounds. It's very much like David Sedaris, but lesbian. It's so, and anybody can enjoy it, even if you're not a lesbian. It's so funny. She's a genius. Okay, so we we're both on. I'm lucky to have her with me on the Jackie Mo Show. That's on Twitch, 
And you can see clippets of it on our own personal TikToks. Follow us on TikTok. And um, it's on our YouTubes. We have some on our YouTubes too. Uh, but you can also follow it on Twitch on the Comedy Hub and KO Comedy. And also you can see my special on Amazon called These Lips. So Jackie Monahan, These Lips. And I also have my own podcast called The Jackie Mo Show. And uh, I perform regularly and I'm, um, I'm getting ready to film another special on a grander scale and touring to get that started. So I'm excited about that. That's awesome. So the next couple places that people can see you live would be where, Lisa? um right here in in the living room no so so i don't have any upcoming live events uh, i mean hopefully i will in the future but except for except for the jackie mo show which is broadcast live okay so, so yes people can see me live in my living room on the jackie mo show <laughs> uh yes and hopefully maybe there'll be uh in-person live events in the future when does the Jackie Mo show go live? What day and time? So people are abreast of that. Every Saturday at five. So five to six. Five and Pacific time, eight o'clock Eastern time. And once, once in a great while, I'll have to, we'll have to not be on it because I'll have a live show. Uh, but for the most part, it's every single Saturday at five. Pacific. Love and people that. can tune in by going to a uh, Twitch Comedy Hub and and or and or KO Comedy. And you can find both of those things online. Is that right. is that correct, Jackie? Yeah. yeah. And if anybody wants to watch it live on the Zoom and get to meet us, they can direct message us and we'll give you the Zoom. Oh, cool. That's, I was on it and it was so much fun, everybody at home. So you got to go watch it. These two are dynamite together. And you are They're fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about your comedic styles. And I know you don't do stand up, Lisa, but you're a force in entertainment with comedy. And so you're, when you speak, and I've seen you speak, you're very eye contacty and very uh, subtle. You're not like me. Uh, la, you know, you're you're very. Um, so I, I, I'm imagining what it is like when you're performing live now. And same with Jackie. Jackie is so patient with her delivery and so, you know, like professional and. And I admire you too because of a lot of things, but I am intrigued by your patience with your style of delivery, even in an interview, your patient. And you were speaking, Lisa, about a dialogue and getting the laugh back and being patient with that. Can you explain to us how you got your style of delivery? Because it didn't, you didn't just wake up with it, did you? Tell me you didn't. I, I, yeah, no, I don't, I don't. I don't think I woke up with it, but, but uh, I guess I would say, um, well, I guess I would say, like, I, I, I was a theater major in college, and uh, when you're a theater major, you have to take acting, like a lot of acting classes, which I didn't always enjoy. I didn't always enjoy, and uh, and some sometimes I did, but and then and then there's all these kind of theatrical rules like if, if you're in a play there's a fourth wall and uh technically the characters can't hear don't know the audience is there and yet the audience is the audience is there i don't know i've had i've had friends uh, i don't know after you know after graduating from college it's just like that's fucking bullshit the audience is there so, so like so my style of delivery i guess is all about like the audience is really there and never never pretending like they're not that doesn't really answer the question but i would say that's like the it's probably the most uh, the thing that i that i think about the most is like the audience is actually there like we're in the same room together <laughs> this is happening at the right here right now in front of people you know in terms of like live performances and stuff i think it does answer the question because mm -hmm. that leans you know, makes you lean towards being patient and having a dialogue back and letting them finish laughing. And 
Did, that's, did all the audio... to, that's all I have to say at, at this time. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Thank you. That was, that was fabulous. Are you kidding me? And then Jackie, what's your answer to that fabulous question I came up with? It's like the opposite. I, I pretend I'm the only one there. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I love that answer though, Lisa. It's very interesting to me. Uh, but I, it is kind of the opposite. I really try to make myself laugh. And when and when I started comedy, I I asked a, a bunch of people told me, Jackie, you can't, they would actually get mad. They were like, you can't try to make yourself laugh. You've got to make the audience laugh. And I was just like, I don't want to do it then. I want to make myself <laughs> laugh. And but there, so there is a happy, I found a happy medium with that. Uh, and I'm actually working with somebody right now who's helping me tighten up my jokes. Because some of them I have, like, they're perfect, and I do them the same all the time. But other ones, um, this friend just pointed out to me, like, had me listen to three of my sets and be like, you did it different every single time. Like, it would be interesting to nail down and write down exactly how you want to do it. And then you could play with it from there, which is very beautiful because... I, I just haven't had that kind of help. And I actually asked the universe recently, like, please help me harness my comedy. And then this person came into my life and was just like, you need a note thing. For, and they're not even a comedian. <laughs> but they know, they know every single, like, I'll be like, I want to do a joke about the Ten Commandments. And, he, and this person's like, oh, Carlin did it. Like, look here. And like... Like, it's just unbelievable how ask and it's received. Like, I really asked the universe to help me, and I found somebody helping me, so it's really good. But th part of what they're helping me with is me being tighter with my comedy and not being so loose. But at the same time, I got to keep my looseness. But, but it's good to be structured with it and then go fireball forward. Uh, so yeah, it's a happy medium. It's a happy medium, but it's really funny that Lisa and I have this exact opposite. But I am starting to like, point more to the audience, and and yeah, it's interesting. I'm exactly there too. I'm trying to like I had a coach, and I had to part ways with my coach because he was so rude. He said, "You've never once done your comedy the same way," so he had to go. <laughs> he had to go, <laughs> and then I was like, "Wait a minute." You know what? You got a point. It took me a couple of weeks to calm down. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You have it's all hard. Kinds of it's different. hard. It's hard. I don't want to either. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually part of having PTSD. I have, I have complex PTSD, and and part of that is I want, like, I don't like to do dancing that other people do. I want to do my own, and it's how to, it's how to deal with PTSD. Wow. I have PTSD. I didn't even know that. I don't know if you do. You might. Uh, I do. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I was in the part of it. Got, I went through a lot of military sexual military sexual traumas. Oh, so wow. I really earned my PTSD. Okay, I didn't even you get did. it. I, I earned mine too. I earned mine too. Yeah. Yeah. We do earn it as women. Yeah. yeah. Before yeah. Gloria all red, we were all red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would the two of you like to say? Is there any anything about your life or your career that you got to highlight before we go? Because I don't want to miss something. Lisa? Who fought it? That's what <laughs> I want to say. <laughs> uh, probably me. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I was... I was on a plane with Madeline Alnick, the director of our shows, and she and she kept saying to me, somebody farted. And she went to the bathroom, and I wrote on her newspaper, say out loud, who farted in a Boston accent. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, die laughing. That's the funniest thing ever. Even my mom thinks it's funny. Who farted? Every, every now and then I say, hey, mom, who farted? And then she'll say, how's Jackie? Oh, <laughs> it's too bad that somebody doesn't fought in Harvard Yard instead yes. of right next to you. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, okay, so 
Where are you performing next, Jackie? So people can come uh, along. I do. I perform right now. I'm performing all over LA, but I'm gonna be doing some shows in Denver, Lisa. Ah, I'm from Denver. Uh, in at the end of May. Oh, I'm what? starting a little tour. Oh my God! But, tell um, you, when you know, tell me. Please tell me the venues. I will. I absolutely will. And uh, but right now I perform a lot at Flappers and Burbank. You can see where all my performances in my link tree that's on all my social. And yeah, and and also the Jackie Mo show, and and uh, you know listen to my listen to my album on all streaming. As these lips, as is it, is it, these lips, right? Yeah, it's explicit. Oh, cool. So, is it um, harder to tell jokes in a Mile High city? Uh, other people have said it, but I don't find it to be harder. Other people, uh, my friend has a really great joke about it, like gasping for air and trying to do <laughs> jokes. But uh, but yeah, I, I had one of my best sets ever in Denver. And it was like a giant audience. And I even, there was a hot woman in the front. <laughs> and and I was just like, this was me. I was just like, like every time, like I was just like killing it. And then that's what everybody said, the producer said, not me. And, uh, I looked over and saw this hot woman and I just like kind of blushed and and it was a huge venue like with all these that was like so many people and then there was a club after dancing and I ended up fooling around with that woman that night it was kind of amazing so was she a part of an episode on these lips no I never really talked about it until now <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear but, it. But all my, all the people on the tour and uh, the producer of the tour heard me, heard me. This is when uh, I was drinking. I was drinking. So I, I've, I'm sober now. So I'm not, I can be more respectful with my pro projecting. So there's one last question I've got to ask you since you toured with the great Amy Schumer. She's she's been up, she's been down, she's been all around. People have said pros and cons. What's it like being around her? Oh, it's amazing. Um, yeah, it is. She's she's really very funny. Like I've had people say, "Oh, she made it because of Chuck Schumer." Like, no, she she <laughs> didn't. Like she Chuck Schumer didn't pay any attention to her till she became famous. I witnessed that, and. Um, you know, I witnessed her being really poor. Like, I remember she couldn't, I didn't see her for a while at an open mic. And uh, and I was like, where have you been? And she's like, I couldn't afford the the cover. Like, I, she hustles. She's a, a hard worker and she's very funny in person. Like, she's, like, I think I'm one of the funniest people in person. And people have described me as that. Like, Jackie's even funnier off stage. I kind of am. Uh, but uh, no, I'm very funny on stage. But anyway, <laughs> she's she's very funny too. Like we would do crazy stuff. Like especially when she wasn't as famous. When we why am I holding this? When we could, um, <laughs> I was imitating Denver. Uh, like we would be on a plane, and she would always be like Jackie, low pro, low pro, uh, like low profile. And one time I was like, I can't, I can't help myself, Amy. And I just like jumped. I like just thought to be really funny, like here's the plane. And I just like jumped up and hit my head really hard and fell back into the seat. Like I couldn't help it, I had to do it. And she was like, are you okay, are you okay? Like everybody around us was like, are you okay? And I was just like, oh yeah, I'm okay. And and she would, like the, when on, on the red carpet she threw herself in front of Kanye, she would do that on, on like on at airports she would just <laughs> pretend to fall and throw herself on the ground and i would just be like are you okay like we she was very funny yeah i'm good i'm so glad to hear that because you know how people can talk and she's been the you know the object of affection and not so much so yeah. i'm glad yeah. to hear she's so wonderful in person yeah. well everybody has everybody has their ups and downs but nobody's Nobody's a Bill Cosby. Like I feel like the, <laughs> sometimes I feel like the worst women are like the best men. 
<laughs> well, she's not. She's not drugging people and fucking them. You know, she's not. She's not. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, this kind of concludes the episode, and I hate to say goodbye, but you guys are really, truly, honestly, you're so wonderful to be around. You as well. I, yeah. I, really, I look forward to reaching out and like seeing what we can do with our, our new project. Yes, let's do that. Feeding the world. Yes, I feel so good to be a part of that. Absolutely. Let's leave some legacies. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Thank Bye, you. Bye, thank Lisa you. Lisa Haas and all right. Jackie Mahan. Bye. I'll see Bye. you all later. Bye. 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 That was awesome. <laughs>